I'm Kohei Tokunaga from NTT Corporation, and I'm mainly uh, working on container runtimes and container builders. And uh, I'm a reviewer of CNC uh, Container D and a maintainer of Builder Kit. And today uh, I'm going to talk about uh, approaches uh, to fetch and run container images inside the browser. So first of all, uh, this is a summary of this talk. Uh, first, porting apps to browser costs time for recompilation and or re-implementation of the application. And container to Wasm uh, is an experimental tool to enable to run a modified containers on browser. And it also enables to distribute OCA container images to browsers and also uh, it supports lazy playing with ESRGZ to shorten the image loading latency. And I've also created an experimental extension of uh, VS Code PhotoWeb to run containers inside browser. So why porting apps to, apps to browsers? Uh, in community, we can find actually lots of use cases of of porting applications to browsers and like leveraging existing applications on browser so they can be used, for example, as dev environment or building blocks and for demo pages, etc. And languages including Ruby, Python, and Swift, and databases like SQLite 3, Postgres are ported to browser and can be used on browser. But porting apps to browsers is actually not easy. Uh, browsers don't provide Linux compatible system, so uh, Linux applications need like a partial re-implementation re uh, if it depends on Linux features. And if the application is uh, written in languages other than JavaScript, uh, we can use WebAssembly or Wasm. Uh, but uh, porting apps to Wasm is not easy as well because Wasm also lacks compatibility to Linux system. For example, the binary format is uh, different from existing common uh, binary formats like x86 ELF and the application might need to be rede redesigned for Harvard architecture of Wasm. This might include like eliminating fork or exec related calls from the application. So some of the issues can be mitigated by uh, language compilers was not target support, but they still don't provide full compatibility to Linux. So can we run a modified Linux applications inside browser? So here container to Wasm comes in a container to Wasm is an experimental converter for container to Wasm. It receives an arbitrarily uh, Linux-based container as the input, and I, it outputs a Wasm image that runs the container on Wasm. Uh, the Linux-based containers and applications uh, run on Wasm uh, without modifications, and this is uh, achieved by CPU emulators ported to Wasm. Using this converter, containers can run on WASI runtimes and on browser, uh, as shown in the pictures on the slide. And it also supports running a modified container images on browser without pre-conversion. Uh, I'll discuss it about, about it later. So container to Wasm converter outputs a was Wasm image and uh, it supports WASI by default. Basic features are supported including SCDIO, environment uh, variables, and sharing directories uh, from the host to the container. And networking is also usable. Um, as of now, networking stack needs to la run outside of the runtime and uh, the following uh, command line shows an example of running 
Ubuntu 22.04 container on Wasm, and uname command tells it is a Linux x86-64 environment, and container's boot file system is available on Wasm. And containers are converted to Wasm, so of course it can run on the browser as well. There are two types of configurations. First one is uh, you can run the container converted to Washi image on browser. Uh, there are actually some existing on browser Washi host implementation available in community, and so you can use uh, the favorite host Washi implementation. And another configuration is based on Emscript 10. Container to Wasm can emit Emscript 10 Wasm image plus JS files that run on browser. And please note that uh, some features that rely on Washi, like uh, Wiser pre initialization, are not available for Emscript 10 output mode. And this picture in this slide is an example of running Ubuntu 22.04 on browser. And containers converted to Wasm can perform networking on browser. There are two types of uh, configurations. The first configuration relies on networking stack helper running outside of the browser. Uh, that networking stack forwards the container's packets on the machine. And pros of this approach is that the container can access to anywhere accessible from that host side networking stack uh, without restrictions by browser. And the cons is uh, this requires running and managing extra, net extra networks, networking stack demo outside of the browser. So another configuration allows the container on browser performing networking without extra networking stack demo outside of the browser. So the networking stack team, uh, so the networking feature is implemented purely on browser. Pros of this mode is that this is an easy to use approach because extra daemon is not needed. And the cons is that uh, it only supports HTTP or HTTPS as of now, and uh, browser's security restrictions are applied to the container as well. For example, containers cannot access to calls restricted sites, and some HTTP headers called forbidden headers are not controllable from the container. So here is a here is a demo of running container on browser. Uh, so you can try this demo of uh, containers on browser on the demo page hosted on GitHub pages. And uh, actually we have several demos for x86-64 containers and RISC-V containers. Uh, we have three images here, um, but uh, let's try Debian image today. Then you can see the black screen uh, in the page, and uh, now this page is loading the Wasm image converted from uh, the Debian container image uh, described, uh, described he here. And then Wasm image now is fully loaded to the browser, so it starts the shell uh, from the Debian container. And by executing a uh, uname command, uh, you can confirm that uh, this is the Linux x86-64 environment. And according to the etc OS release file, uh, this is a Debian container. And you can also see the root file system at slash directly, and this page also enables uh, the, the own browser 
networking stack. So this is a CURL command uh, pointing to this GitHub page itself. And actually the networking stack implementation uh, is not fast at all now, so uh, you need to wait, uh, wait for a while. And then uh, you can see the fetched HTML contents on the shell. So how container to Wasm works? First of all, we use CPU emulators compiled to Wasm for running uh, native binaries on browser. For x86-64 containers, a box emulator is used. And risk for risk 5 containers, tiny MU emulator is used. And emulators and dependencies are packaged into a single, a single Wasm image. For WASHI image, WASHI VFS uh, provides packaging ability. And for image script and image, uh, we use dash dash preload dash file flag uh, for packaging. And for minimizing the startup time, uh, we experimentally use WISE pre-initializer and this uh, pre-boots the kernel during the conversion step. So at runtime, the container immediately starts uh, on the pre-booted kernel. And for on browser configuration, as shown in the picture, uh, the emulator for packets relying on the networking stack C2W-net uh, running outside of the browser. Uh, the emulator on browser and C2W-net on the host are connected over WebSocket and Exchange packets. And C2WNet is implemented based on gvisor-tap-vsoc, uh, which is networking stack written in Go. And we added some features for our use case, uh, like browser support. And another approach uh, for uh, networking stack on browser is uh, uh, yeah, run, running networking stack entirely on the browser. So host side networking stack daemon is not needed. Uh, this networking stack supports forwarding HTTP or HTTPS connection to the outside of the browser using a fetch API. Uh, HTTPS connection is uh, terminated at the networking stack on browser with its own certificates and the connection is re-encrypted uh, using fetch API. This is actually easy to use configuration uh, because the entire networking stack runs on the browser. However, there are some restrictions by fetch API. Uh, for example, accessible sites are limited by codes and forbidden headers uh, cannot be controlled by container. So now we can run containers inside browser, but uh, how can we distribute container images to browser? There are two options. Uh, option A is pre-converting containers to WASM images, and option B is distributing OCI container images to browsers. An option, a first option is uh, distributing containers to browsers uh, by pre-converting containers to WASM images. Uh, as I mentioned, I, uh, we can use container to WASM converter for conversion. As shown in the figure on this slide, the converted WASM image can be uploaded to any HTTP server accessible from the browsers and browser fetches uh, the WASM image and runs it on, on browser. Uh, pros of this approach is that once the container is converted to WASM, it can run on any WASM enabled environment, uh, not limited to browsers. For example, the container can run on WASHI runtimes, uh, like WASM time as well. 
And the cons of this approach is pre-conversion is needed for each container. If you want to run many, uh, many, vari many variety of containers on browser, all of these uh, container images uh, need to be pre-converted to WASM. It may take extra cost for development time. So second option for distributing containers to browsers is to directly, directly distributing OCI compatible container images to browsers. So image conversion is not needed. Uh, in this option, images are fetched to the browser and unpacked inside browser. If you use container registry, uh, this registry actually needs to allow calls access um, because it's accessed from the browser. But unfortunately, as of now, uh, well-known public registries uh, don't allow calls access. Uh, so, but uh, you can try it on localhost registry uh, with calls head uh, configured. Alternatively, you can also use um, calls enabled HTTP or HTTPS server. In this case, uh, the container image needs to be formatted as OCI image layout. Uh, this is a specification of layout of image contents to be stored on the file system. Uh, for example, you can get a tar archive of this format using docker save command uh, of recent version. And container to WASM supports fetching the image uh, formatted with this OCI image layout over HTTP. Uh, the pros of this approach is that this doesn't, this doesn't require pre-conversion of the image and a modified container image can be distributed to browsers. Cons of this approach is that uh, of course existing public container registries doesn't allow calls access as of now. So if you uh, don't use OCI image layout approach, you need to prepare calls enabled container registry uh, or, or users need to use like a proxies to access to the registries. So how does uh, pulling container images to browser work? So uh, option B, so this is implemented using a component image mounter uh, this runs on uh, WASM VM on browser. This calls fetch API of the browser to fetch uh, image contents from the server, including container registry. And the unpacked root file system view of the container is mounted to the guest Linux via uh, virtual IO 9P. And both of container registry and HTTP uh, as server are usable as the image source. Uh, but uh, yeah, here, of course, we have a, uh, a problem about image distribution. Uh, container images are usually very big for a browser, so pulling it to browser is uh, time consuming. Their efforts to minimize the image size of content images, but not all images are easily minimizable. And research shows that playing packages accounts for 76% of container start time, but only 6.4% of the data is read. So the root cause of this issue is the current OCI images. Uh, in these images, each root file system layer is formatted as tar and optionally uh, with compression. Tar is not seekable and cannot perform uh, like a random access parallel extraction. So when we start a container, we first need to download the entire image contents to, to the node, then extract, uh, ex extract uh, all layers. If the image is large, starting up the container will take long. So here we can, uh, uh, here we use uh, the technique of uh, lazy pulling for shortening the image load loading latency. This allows container runtimes, or in this case browser, 
to start up containers before the entire image contents becoming locally available. Instead, necessary chunks of contents like files are downloaded from the registry on demand. This is uh, actually basic loading itself is a well known technique in the container ecosystem, and there are already uh, image formats that support laser playing. And here, uh, the format we use is ESRGZ image. Uh, this is an image format for laser playing and backward compatible to the current OCI image. So uh, we can lazy we can perform laser playing of images from OCI uh, compliant standard registries and uh, also uh, legacy or laser playing agnostic runtimes can also run this image as a non-lazy image. And ESRGZ initially has been or well, uh, currently uh, ESRGZ is developed for container-based system uh, like Docker, Kubernetes. Uh, so this is usable on a variety of tools. Um, for example, Kubernetes, Docker, ContainerD, NadoCTL, Cryo, Podma, BuildKit, etc. And ESRGZ, uh, e this is an overview of ESRGZ image layer format. This is uh, based on StarGZ image format proposed by CRFS, but uh, ESRGZ comes with performance optimization and uh, content verification. As shown in the figure in this slide, ESRGZ is compatible to GZIP and usable as a, a valid OCI or Docker image layer and each file is compressed as a separated GZIP member and the offset to each member in the layer is recorded in TOC file appended at the end of the blob. And this enables random access to file entries and HTTP range request uh, can be used for randomly uh, extracting files from the layer blob stored on the registry. And uh, yeah, um, another thing I need to mention is uh, ESRGZ supports prefetching of files, prefetching of files that are likely accessed during container startup. Uh, these files are called prioritized files. Before the container startup, container runtime prefetches these prioritized files for, uh, to mitigate the network related overheads for reading them and other files can be fetched from the registry on demand. And I'll show a, a benchmarking result of lazy playing on browser. I've measured time to take for playing an image from the registry to the browser. Uh, here we use ghl.io for registry and Google Chrome for browser and here Default, config, default configuration of uh, the browser cannot access to the registry because of uh, code restriction. Uh, so, so I've disabled code restriction uh, via the flag. And this shows the time to take for startup GCC image and run echo hello command on the shell. And legacy image cannot start container before the entire image content become locally available. So startup takes accordingly. And the ESRGZ shortens the time to take for startup by lazy playing. And second one is the time to take for startup of Python image and RAM print function. And this also shows uh, performance improvements of pulling uh, the image by ESRGZ image. So there are uh, several tools uh, support creating ESRGZ images. Uh, so I've shown examples of lazy putting from the registry in the previous slides. 
Um, and the container to Wasm actually uh, still supports lazy playing of EtherGV from HTTP uh, servers, uh, not only registry. And here, uh, first example is BuilderKit supports building EtherGV as one of the compression modes. Uh, you can use this feature through uh, buildx command. And CTR remote is a CLI command um, for container D. Uh, this is provided by SarGV snapshot project. Uh, you can so you can fully customize and configure uh, the ethergv image, uh, inclu including prefetch optimization. So I expect applying the abil abil applying the ability of running containers on Wasm and Brothers to uh, various kinds of use cases. And here um, I'll show some of the examples or possible examples as well. So one of the example use cases of uh, this technique is running containers on browser-based IDEs. Uh, VS Code Container Wasm is an example of example extension of VS Code for the web. This enables to run containers inside the browser and provides terminal to the VS Code uh, on browser. Uh, the container runs on browser, so you don't need to prepare remote containers. And the workspace directly is mounted at slash workspace path uh, in the container. And networking is also available based on fetch API with, uh, with restrictions by browser like chorus. And here, uh, Uh, this is another demo uh, for VS Code Container Wasm. Uh, we use github.dev here, and so here you have uh, extension Container Wasm. This is available on Marketplace, and. Uh, this repo has VS Code slash settings dot JSON file, and this config file points to the URL URL of the Debian container converted from Wasm, and uh, I will use uh, this image on this workspace, and. This is a terminal of the Debian container running inside uh, of the browser. And by, okay, by executing uname command, uh, then I can confirm that this is the uh, Linux x86-64 environment. And uh, you can also see the work, workspace directly is mounted at slash workspace and for this demo this container contains GCC compiler so let's compile the C code stored in this repository so then uh, run the compiled binary. Okay, hello world is printed as expected. So compilation, uh, the entire process of compilation uh, are done inside the browser. And um, I already mentioned uh, two options for container image distribution and this extension also supports both of uh, image distribution options. First one, so this is 
an example configuration for option A is that is distributing containers to browsers by pre-converting containers to WASM images. And uh, you can add, add the image location URL to the workspaces configuration file dot VS code slash settings dot JSON so that the extension can fetch and launch the specified container on browser. And uh, this is an example configurations for option B uh, that is direct, direct, uh, directly distributing OCI compatible images to browsers. Uh, also in this case, uh, the image location uh, the image location uh, is written to the workspaces settings.json file so that the extension can pull and launch the specified container on the browser. So briefly, uh, how this extension works, but uh, as I mentioned in the previous slides, uh, container and Linux run inside Wasm VM with a CPU emulation and we use uh, here Microsoft slash VS code dash Wasm for Wasm was and Washi host implementation uh, written in JS on browser. And this is a uh, Wasm host integrated to VS code. Uh, this allows Wasm VM to access to the terminal on the VS code and the workspace directly. And workspaces are provided as uh, mapped directly to the emulator in the Wasm VM and the emulator shares this uh, mapped directly into the guest uh, VM uh, via vartio 9 p And again, fetch API based HTTP and HTTPS networking is enabled by default with code restrictions, etc. So not limited to on browser IDEs, uh, I believe there are some ex uh, possible use cases for running containers on Wasm, uh, like interactive on browser Linux based demo and uh, sandbox execution environment for containers, application debugger runnable on, runnable on browser and record and re replay debugging, etc. Actually, this project is still in a very, very early stage uh, and we expect further improvement. Uh, the first concern is, of course, uh, performance. Um, we use CPU emulators for running uh, binaries and currently uh, the performance, uh, the, the, yeah, the runtime performance is very slow. Uh, so we need further analysis and improvement for uh, runtime performance of binaries. And possibly, uh, I believe I can integrate this uh, container on browser with ELF conf. Uh, this is an AOT compiler of Linux ARC64 ELF to Wasm by Masashi Yoshimura Entity Corporation. Uh, and uh, second concern or second uh, uh, feature work is uh, integration of container ecosystem with the browsers. Uh, currently, um, OS package reports like APK, um, et cetera, are not accessible from browser. Uh, so, uh, like a uh, up to get cannot be uh, executed in container inside browser. So uh, these package repos need to allow code access, etc. And also container registries, public container registries are not support uh, code access. So um, this integration of a container ecosystem and browsers uh, will be needed. And third one is graphics support. Uh, currently, a CLI terminal is only supported UI, uh, so uh, yeah, I expect uh, graphic support as well. And 
not only uh, this project, uh, there are some existing approaches for running unmodified applications on Wasm, and I listed some of them here. First one, V86 is x86 compatible CPU emulator by Fabian Hemmer, and it supports a wide variety of guest OSs, including Windows, but it doesn't support uh, x86 64 as of now. And Tiny MU is a risk 5 and x86 emulator by Fabrice Billard. It can run on browser and actually container to Wasm uses this for risk 5 emulation. Uh, but it doesn't support uh, x86 64 emulation. And finally, this is a summary of this talk. Uh, porting apps to browse browsers cost time for recompilation and or re-implementation of the application. So container to Wasm enables to run unmodified container on browser and also enables to distribute OCI container images to browsers. And lazy playing with ESRGC is also supported to shorten the image loading, loading latency. And I will also created an extension of VS Code for the web to run containers inside browser. So that is, yeah, that's all. Thank you very much.